Hello again YouTube. Um, I thought I'd make you a video this evening um, about a couple of different things. Um, I could probably have done the whole professional um, voiceover, fancy images treatment, but um, quite frankly I've, uh, I've had a long day at work and uh, I've just taught um, a guitar lesson and a couple of other things and I'm absolutely shattered. So um, you'll have to put up with the whole shaky camera and um, you know <laughs> slapdash approach. I haven't really made any kind of script or plan or anything so I expect a bit of rambling but hopefully you'll find some of it interesting. Um, first of all I've got a couple of books I wanted to show you. Um, these are a bit of a departure from my usual thing. Um, they're actually modern books um, and uh, those of you from the UK will recognize this name right here. Um, it's actually written by Jonathan Ross who is a kind of a UK celebrity He's a chat show host, uh, or certainly was, um, comedian, um, what else has he done? film critic, um, sort of all around TV guy. And uh, what a lot of people don't know is that he has been into comic books heavily um, his whole life. And uh, he actually produced a really, really cool documentary on Steve Ditko, um, which I might link to from this video. Um, it's actually available on YouTube. And um, I've actually found a bunch of really, really cool comic um, documentaries um, recently, which I might do a whole separate video on, so I guess I won't talk any more about that for now. But in any case, he got into his head um, a while ago to try writing his own comic book. And um, I haven't read these yet. Um, I've ordered the whole, um, the whole mini-series. Um, but it is a, uh, a vampire book. Um, it's about vampires, um, aliens, and all kinds of other weird stuff, but it's set in um, Prohibition um, era uh, New York, which is pretty different, <laughs> and about all the kind of gang turf warfare, I guess hence the name, um, that was going on at the time, but with all this kind of random science fiction crap thrown in. So, this sounds pretty cool. I'll give it a bit of a go. I don't read a huge number of uh, modern books um, at the moment, but I thought that sounded pretty cool, and, um, you know, if it takes off, it might be cool to have them. So, what I was really wanted to speak to you guys about uh, today, excuse my finger on the lens there, um, is about comic book storage and this is one of those kind of back to basics videos so um, those of you who know a lot about comics might want to switch off here although you, I might cover some things you didn't know um, the, the thing is I, I think it's really really important that um, all of us remember that um, every comic book might be someone's first comic book and I think this goes for a lot of hobbies and interests, but certainly comic books. Outsiders and um, people new to the hobby it can be made to feel really, really stupid a lot of the time, and they're treated really badly sometimes um, by people who you know know what they're talking about, and they're like, "Oh God, I can't believe you didn't know that," and you know this and the other. And it's not really fair, really, because let's face it, we're all nerds. <laughs> None of us are cool. <laughs> let's let's get that straight right from the beginning. Um, so yeah, we should be nicer to people, you know. Um, teach people about the hobby. Help people out and answer questions. And you know, if someone asks a question that sounds stupid, don't shout at them. You know, I've, a couple of people on my videos have asked innocent questions about things, and people are quite quick to jump down their throats about it. So. Everyone should chill out, get along. <laughs> so anyway, um, I get a lot of questions about comic book storage, and I think that's kind of important, so I thought I'd do a bit of a random, badly put together video on that. So, um, first things first, um, you're going to want two things really when you're um, going to store a comic book. You want a bag and a board. Um, I'm just going to bring up something on my screen actually so I can refer to it quickly. Um, a bit of information up here. Um, cool, right. Um, boards. You might think this is straightforward, you might think this is a piece of cardboard, which it is, um, <laughs> but it's so much more. Um, first of all, you get different sizes. Um, you get golden age size, silver age size, and modern size, and probably others as well. Um, obviously, 
if you if money was an issue and you collect all kinds of different comic books, um, go for go for the silvers or the golds, and then you can put everything in them and they'll fit. They might jiggle around a bit, but you know it's better than trying to stuff a a silver age or a golden age book into a modern bag and doesn't even bear thinking about. So yeah. Um, but the thing that is going to affect the price the most is um, not all boards are created equal. Um, you get the the purpose of a backing board is partly to keep the comic book rigid, um, but also largely, basically, what happens when comic books or any kind of paper product is left for a long period of time? Um, as the paper deteriorates, um, it produces all kinds of horrible um, contaminant byproducts, um, which are very acidic. And then these acids further help to deteriorate the comic book, and therefore it creates more acids, and it's this horrible cycle. And then it goes on for years and years and years and years and years, and then you pick up the paper and the pages are all brittle and it crumbles to dust. So essentially that's what happens to it. Because, uh, because these books are made of paper, it's kind of wood, they're kind of a live, living thing, you know, you've got to treat them as such. So, what you will need to do to counter the acid production is have um, an, an alkali, um, or acid-free at least, um, uh, something like that in, in the environment so that it, it will help balance things out. So that's part of the job that these backing boards do, and they should be... Um, pH neutral or slightly above, so um, alkaline really. And then there are two different types. You get um, the calcium buffered boards. Oh yeah, mostly the alkaline that they have in them is um, calcium carbonate. Um, and um, some of the boards are coated. They're just coated. Normally on one side, so you get like a shiny side and then a not shiny side. Um, and that's the most common sort of affordable type of board you're going to get. Sometimes you get both sides are coated, and um, the best ones are buffered all the way through with calcium carbonate. And there is a really interesting link which I will um, put a link to on this video, um, where a guy basically took all these different boards and he did um, pH tests on all of them, um, and basically he's got some really interesting findings. Um, and it basically proves conclusively that the coated boards are often, sometimes, actually, it would be best if you didn't have a board in at all, because although the coated side might be just about pH neutral, the other side is really acidic, and it's still sealed inside a bag with your comic book, producing all that acid. So you don't want it anywhere near your book. So really... For, um, for valuable books, long-term storage, if you can afford it, try and go for the fully um, buffered all the way through boards. Um, it really does seem like the way to go. So you've got your board. Um, the other thing you're going to need is a bag. Now bags do all kinds of other horrible things. If you buy uh, regular plastic bags, they produce these petroleum distillates and all this other rubbish, and I won't go into all of that, partly because I don't know much about it. Um, <laughs> I do work for a company which uh, I have to learn about boring stuff like migration of plasticizers and all that rubbish, but um, basically regular plastic bags aren't any good for your comics, just remember that. What you want is something that's chemically inert. Um, so, proper comic book bags are a good way to go. Um, people have different ways of sealing them, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, the bags themselves... I put the majority of my comics in these kind of regular mid-priced um, comic book bags um, but my really nice stuff I try and put in mylar and I get lots and lots of questions about mylar so we'll cover that for a minute mylar is a chemically inert um, very very glossy very very kind of glass clear um, product uh, plastic product and it's used it's archival quality so it, um, it gets used to store sort of documents in, you know, valuable documents in various libraries and archives and all sorts. Um, and it's just widely recognised as just the, the best thing to use for, for storing anything, paper, for a long period of time. Um, so I use Mylar. It's not cheap. Um, and I use the 4mm 
version. And mil in this sense is not uh, millimeters. Um, mil in this sense is mil, which is equivalent to. Let me, this is one of the reasons I have my screen open so I can read this. Uh, it's a, a unit of length equal to one thousandth of an inch or 0 0.0254 of a millimeter if you really care about that so it's a very 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 thin measure anyway so these are four mils so they're actually they're, they're, these are the thicker versions of the model and they're the ones that I use um, and I buy these in you know 10 or 20 at a time every now and again um, and you can again you get silver age golden age size um, modern age size and um, you can get the versions with flaps that fold over but I get the four mil versions with just these um, it basically is open at the end um, and you you put your board in with your comic book. Um, always try when you're putting your comic uh, in the mylar. Um, put the comic against the backing board first, and then slide it in. Um, try not to be kind of putting that in and then stuffing the comic in separately, because especially with mylar, especially a thicker mylar, it can shear um, the front cover straight off if you're not careful. So really, really want to watch that. Um, so that's Mylar, and the other th brilliant thing about Mylar, it's been said before, especially, I think it was 74 Susie who said this in the first place, it's like HD for your comics, it's great, it really makes the colours pop, whereas regular bags, they can maybe sometimes, kind of, they're a bit cloudy, so they, the, the, the covers necessarily, they're a bit, a bit dulled by it. Um, but Mylar just makes the colours pop, they look gorgeous, really, really glossy, it's a cool thing to use, but it is expensive, so I wouldn't use it on every one of your modern books or anything. Just just save it for the best. Um, and that can be bought online. Uh, if anyone wants to know where, um, again, only really if you're from the UK, probably a million and one places get it in the US, but I know particular places in the UK. So if you want to, um, PM me and I'll, I'll let you know where to get it. So you've got your comics in your bags, you've got your best comics in Mylar. Um, obviously the next thing up again after that, is um, if you get your CGC comics, they use a different method again for encapsulating them. Um, what happens basically is they put them in, they're sealed inside a micro chamber um, along with uh, pieces of this um, special paper, um, which again is chemically inert or, or at least alkali. Um, which sits um, inside either cover, I think they put it, or maybe it's one in the middle, one in the inside cover. Can't remember exactly where it goes, but basically there's paper in here, um, archival paper inside the book, um, which they use as a as a um, an anti-acidic agent. Um, and then what happens is the microchamber is um, sealed inside this kind of outer case. Um, and they do that with uh, a mixture of kind of compression and this ultrasonic vibration system, uh, which basically makes it, you know, obviously, well, the term is slabbed, and you can see why. Um, the only way you're getting it out of there is to sort of smash it out. I mean, it's, it's, it's you can crack them open, but um, they're tamper-proof. And uh, it obviously, is, as well as having it professionally graded, um, it's a great way to get books look, looked after because, you know, that's good for a, a fair few years. Um, it's also worth mentioning that uh, with any kind of storage uh, system, especially regular bags and boards, you want to be changing them up every few years because you'll see the boards will start to yellow and it's basically the boards going to begin to deteriorate over a period of time as well and so do the bags. So, you know, much of a pain as it is, um, it's good to change everything over every few years and because it, you have to do it so rarely, it shouldn't be too expensive and in a way it's a nice way to be familiarised with your collection again. I mean, I've had to do it um, recently. And it's quite a nice way because you get out every single book that you own and go through it. And, you know, these have been sitting in boxes forgotten about for ages. And it's quite nice to um, kind of pick them up again. And um, Well, I like doing anything with my comic books. So, <laughs> so you've, got your, um, you've got your comics in bags and boards. Um, what do you want next? Do you want to store them in a box? And um, you get long boxes and short boxes. Right now, I've got a short box in front of you because uh, it's a bit easier to handle. So this is a comic short box. They come flat packed, and you basically assemble the lid and the box separately. Um, and again, um, they'll be made of um, pH neutral cardboard. Um, and then basically, you want to store your comics upright. Um, and Ideally, 
Um, you want to be storing your comics um, one facing forward, one facing back, one facing forward, one facing back because the spine is slightly thicker than the other end but I don't. <laughs> In an ideal world, I would um, but I really, really don't. Um, I, I just... I like having them all facing forwards. You can actually get more in as well if you do it the other way. Um, so anyway, you want to be storing them upright so they're not sliding off each other and, and getting damaged that way. Um, you can also get these little dividers that go in so you can, if you've got a huge number in a long box, you can have these dividers so you can obviously see which titles are where. And one thing I was going to mention, when it comes to actually sealing the, um, the books inside the bags, if I grab any old one for example, um, what 99.9% .9 of people do is tape it up at the back, and this is going to be difficult for the camera to pick up. Okay, so you've got where it's folded over there. A lot of people put the flap on the outside, and then they put a piece of tape in the middle, or a couple of pieces of tape either side. I don't do that. I fold the flap inside. It just seems neater for me, and um, you don't end up, you know with tape and ruining the bags and getting crap everywhere. Um, this is just a personal preference. It's a little bit more fiddly just to kind of fold it over, but once you do it once, there's a there's sort of a permanent fold in the plastic and it's very, very easy to do the next time. And once you get the hang of it, um, just you've got to basically iron out the creases into these corners. Um, I prefer having the whole fold over method. I'll be interested to know if anyone else on YouTube does that because I haven't really come across it. Uh, very often with anybody, so I think that's a really cool way to um, to get it all together. It's, it's it just feels neater to me. Um, so that's that. Ah, another thing I was going to raise quickly. What you might find, I'm running out of space here, is that you will have your regular long boxes or short boxes, and you'll get CGC books or even the if you get the four mil mylar with the flap that sticks up, like this. Um, the modern age just about fits, but if you get silver age with the flap that sticks up or CGC books, you'll find they won't fit inside these regular boxes. So you're either going to have to find some other kind of random box, or you can get magazine size kind of boxes, storage boxes. I think they're also called 2000 AD size. Um, Getting to the floor now. And um, these are great, they're just a little bit bigger, and um, you've got space for CGC books and um, these are all Silver Age books with the uh, Mylar flap that sticks up and these will fit in here quite happily and obviously these kind of books this is my best Silver Age stuff and my CGC books so I'm, I actually only I actually have I bought these I think I bought a pack of four of these boxes and I haven't even filled one yet so um, I mean it's worth getting them um, just to store your best stuff and the other thing is you don't want to half fill a box and then just leave them kind of leaning um, because they can all fall over and then they can stack up on each other and get damaged. So what I've done is I've just packed some old clothes. You can use newspaper, you can use whatever you want or some, some random books from a bookshelf or something. I've just used some old clothes um, just to stuff it in there and keep it all upright because the worst thing that can happen is that they all slide over and they all start to crease and bend and the whole, whole uh, exercise is a waste of time then. So I think that's everything I wanted to cover now. Um, I'll probably finish making this video and then realise that I've missed out something really, really obvious. So if I have, I'll put it in the notes. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my take on comic book storage. Um, I guess general atmospheric conditions ought to be mentioned as well. Um, it's kind of obvious. Don't keep them somewhere really humid. Don't keep them in a desert. Um, don't keep them too hot, don't keep them too cold, keep them in a normal room, keep them at a cool room temperature, in the dark. Um, oh, the other thing that's always good to do as well, they have these holes, so obviously you, you're going to get like a little patch of UV coming through there. Um, if possible, put a, a board or something the other side, or turn the first comic book the other way around or something, just to um, stop the light from getting in, because you want them kept in the dark, obviously. Um, yeah, I think that's about everything. So, <laughs> till the next time, I will try and make some other kind of insightful video, um, which is coming up on 20 minutes, so it's probably a good time for me to shut up anyway. Um, so I hope this has been useful. So as usual, uh, usual, usual um, please subscribe to my channel, check out my other videos, um, leave your comments below. I'd 
be interested to know if you guys have any kind of quirky, interesting takes on, on the whole storage thing. And, uh, yeah, like the video if you like it, and I'll, uh, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.